We've got a new segment for you this week, last week today in Cruise News. So stay tuned. And as always, if you enjoy this content, please like, subscribe, and turn on all notifications so you get notified each time we post. We have a new segment today for our viewers and listeners. It's what I like to call Last Week Today in Cruise News. So let's get right to it. In Cruise News last month, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, announced that they were no longer going to advise against traveling via cruise ship due to the risks associated with the coronavirus pandemic, according to USA Today. CDC officials said that the agency removed cruise ships from its list of travel and health notices after more than two years based on declining numbers of COVID-19 infections aboard vessels. Additionally, cruise lines can now return to offering passengers interactive experiences that were previously under suspension. This means such things as galley tours and cooking classes, mixology contests, and other behind-the-scenes tours that were previously under suspension are free to resume. There are also no longer any ship and capacity limits at ports, and the requirements for physical distancing on shore excursions has been reduced to a recommendation. In other news, Alaska is set for a huge season in 2022, it looks like, with 60 cruise ships expected to be operated in the region, according to the 2022 Cruise Industry News Annual Report. Cruise lines are expected to return to profitability this year. Carnival Corporation expects to return to profitability by the, by the third quarter of 2022, Ar Arnold Donald, president and CEO, said on Tuesday's first quarter earnings call. Donald says he expects to post a loss for the second quarter and also a net loss for the full year of 2022, but things are expected to turn around significantly in 2023, driven by the momentum in demand and higher pricing, combined with an 8% increase in fleet capacity over 2019. And finally, as always, cruise ships are stepping up in times of diversity as we see in Ukraine. Holland America and Alma Waterways are providing housing for Ukrainian refugees on a number of the ships. Also, a number of cruise companies employing Ukrainians and continuing, continuing to do so in these difficult times have stepped up to provide transport for those who wish to go home to their families or solid communication facilities for those remaining. Joining me today to react to this news and gives, give some perspective are Helene and Ira Kaplan of Cruise Holidays of Marlboro, located in English Town, New Jersey. Ira and Helene have been planning cruise and land vacations for 30 plus years for their clients in New Jersey and across the country. Hi, folks. Welcome back to RT RTE Travel Talk. Good morning. Good morning, Ken, how and how are you this morning? It is absolutely wonderful to see you again, and I'm doing great. So, folks, we have a lot of interesting news out there, and a lot of great news both this month and the last month. So I thought I would just check in with you folks to get a view from the front line. Okay. What can cruisers expect and clients expect over the next few months as we go ahead into the world of cruising. Well, just to give you now the CDC, and thanks for having us, by the way, Ken. Thank sure. you. Sure. Thank you for having again. us. But again, but it looks like the CDC now has relaxed all the requirements for the cruise lines. Because they've relaxed the cruise lines, let's restrictions. say, restrictions and the protocols that they really needed, it now gives the cruise lines to open up their businesses to now have the clients able to board the ships some ships have already did away with the testing to right. board the ships, the masking on the ships. They've now opened up that they can fill the ships at each port of call now when the ships leave. They now can do individual galley tours and ship tours and behind the scene tours. They're now letting it to where the clients can feel like they did prior to the pandemic. Other than you still must be vaccinated. Right. And that's fine. I don't think that's going to go away in the shortcoming. But other than that, it still gives that client that comfort that they're in a surrounding that they themselves are vaccinated as well as the crew and staff. Yeah. So the onboard experience is basically back to normal. Almost. Pretty yeah. much. That's Almost. what we have the clients that we have on the ships every week now. Oh, they're loving right. it. They're all coming back up these ships and they, they've they've run it so perfectly that now they feel comfortable that they did when they sailed in 2019, 18 and so on prior to the pandemic. They've Wonderful. now realized that, wow, this is really terrific now. And Wonderful. they feel like nothing's ever been happening other than we lost two years of our lives, basically. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. So we're getting good comments from folks coming back. Excellent, Excellent comments. comments. Excellent now, comments. 
there's been they're, a lot of talk about booking future sailings. Been a lot of talk about capacity. Are the ship are, are the ships starting to sail full now, folks? I think the consensus is they're going to gradually start increasing capacity, and their feeling is by July or August they will be back at a hundred percent. Right. So that begs the question: What is what do you see? For the future of cruise pricing, I, I'll tell you on something. The rise. On the rise, no question. On I the think rise. I think you're seeing the programs that they had previously. Now they're getting a little stronger because they want to start filling those ships. Right. Plus, you can see the difference of the yields that you're getting from the cruise lines. Pricing has now increased dramatically. For where you used to see it, a uh, hundred dollar difference or a fifty dollar difference is now. $400 difference it's and $500 more. difference, if it's not, not more. more. Yeah. Wow. So they're now getting into the yield part of it, but they want to try to recoup some of the dollars and cents that they've lost over the past 18 months or so. I think right. they're seeing what we're seeing, that the interest is there. We are extremely busy where there are days we look at each other and we feel we're right back where we were pre-pandemic, which is excellent. excellent yeah. I and mean, we, we've waited a long time for that. And so did the clients. They're calling and they're using their future cruise credits that they had. They're bringing friends and family. More groups are traveling now. And they're taking better accommodations because they had to wait so long. Right. Yeah. Everybody everybody wants to, to to go big or go home. (laughs) <laughs> so one thing that came across my desk was that Alaska is really hot for 2022. Are you are you you folks seeing that? No Very question. Much so. Very yeah. much so. Seven day Alaska as well as land and cruise tours. Right. Helene, what what is a land and cruise tour? You're going to do a pre or post package prior to boarding and you're going into the interior of Alaska. We usually recommend to our clients to do it before. This way you're living out of a suitcase, you're in the lodges, you're in the wilderness, and then once you board the ship and unpack, that's when your your true vacation begins. And this way you have unpacked and you're on board the ship for at least seven days. So if if folks are going to Alaska, do you rec- recommend a cruise tour for the first if they have for the a first time, timer? They need they need the time. Right. Ten days in our opinion, might be a little too short. We usually recommend a minimum of four days on the land to truly immerse yourself and get the feeling of where you are. So you're looking at 11 plus days. If they have the time, they'll usually do that. The other thing that came across my desk, we saw the note about Arnold Donald of uh, Carnival saying that they expect to return to profitability. Ira, that was something that I've heard a lot from our our viewers and subscribers. Well, we just don't know whether the cruise lines are even going to be able to survive this. What do you hear out there with regard to the viability of the cruise lines going forward? I think we're in pretty good shape. I, I happen to agree with you. I think they are. There's no question that the cruise lines did what they needed to do. Right. During this pandemic to try to keep themselves afloat, let's say. But in this case, the perfect example, Carnival, some of their old tonnage that they had, they've scrapped some of the old tonnage. They've sold off some of the old tonnage. You've seen the difference of the itineraries that the cruise lines have come up with to try to stimulate that business sailing out of Panama, sailing out of Barbados. You really never saw those types of itineraries prior to the pandemic, but they've now come up with these itineraries to stimulate the client to go on a different itinerary that they've never seen before and try to get them to get on the ships, so, which brings the yield that much higher yeah. because now they'll have that interest, get more people on the ship. And if you don't do one of the newer itineraries, but now you're interested. Now it's up to us to put them on the ship that they belong on to do the itinerary that they're looking for. Right. So Ira, do you think that these different type of itineraries, like you mentioned sailing under Barbados, and that was actually one that was of interest to me. Do you think those will continue now that Things are getting back to normal, or will they? Will the cruise lines fall back to you know what? We're going to just sail out of Fort La, Fort Lauderdale and Orlando and uh, Miami. No, I, I'll be honest with you. I think they are going to continue. I think a port of call like a Barbados. <laughs> first, they're not putting the big ships that they're going to hold uh, an Oasis class of ship right. of six thousand plus passengers. Right. They're going to try with the smaller type vessels that only holds maybe two thousand twenty five hundred. Let's see if this this itinerary really works. Right. Plus. It adds in the fact of a pre and post package in Barbados. Right. So if you're going to sail out of Barbados now and you want to do two nights to see what the island and the Caribbean port of call is about, you can then do a hotel package pre before the ship or post either or see what the island is about, board the ship and go a little further in the Southern Caribbean now 
flying into Barbados. I think also that particular, if the island stepped up during the pandemic and allowed the ships to, to port there, I think it also supports the island. And it shows the, the commitment that the cruise industry made to them. And I think that's that's valid point. Right. You know, and that may, you know, when I think about it, that makes a lot of sense, especially for especially for the, the people that aren't aren't the drive to the port type. Like, for example, us, like, you know, we're wherever we're going, we're, we're, we've got to fly to a port. Not unless you want to drive down to New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, we could do that. But <laughs> like, for example, we, you know, we'd always fly to Fort Lauderdale. Well, and don't get me wrong, Fort Lauderdale. I love Fort Lauderdale, but there's only so much you can see there. It'd be, it would be nice to spend a pre-day or two pre-days in, in an island like Barbados. Correct. Because if the, if the cruise line stopped there, they were only stopping there for the day. Exactly. Now, if you're embarking or disembarking there, now you have the option to maybe immerse yourself a little more in the culture in the island. And it also supports them. Well, sounds like a good idea. Let's hope, let, let's hope it works out for them and, and it it becomes a great option for flying it on a ship cruisers. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So, the other thing that was that came across our desk is obviously the tragedy that's occurring in Ukraine right at the moment. And once again, we're seeing cruise lines stepping up to the plate. And they, you as know, they always do. Yeah, as they exactly, Helene, as they always do. Yeah, they don't, true, yeah. you know, they're always the first there when a hurricane devastates one of the one of the islands in the Caribbean. That's right. And now we're seeing, you know, Holland America and Ama Waterways providing refuge for some of the Ukrainian refugees. A number of the cruise companies, like I said, are stepping up to for their Ukrainian employees to make sure that they can get home or at least have uh, communication. And right. it's a wonderful thing. What do you folks think, think of that? Well, they've done it all along. I mean, anytime that there was, unfortunately, a tragedy, and a perfect example, when they had the earthquake in Haiti, Cruise lines are up there bringing supplies to those people. Yeah, It's the same thing in Ukraine now, that they're bringing the supplies and they're bringing refugees able to have a place that they can. It's all it is, to be honest with you, the cruise ships are floating hotels. Yeah, It's something that they can go to for food, for refuge, for shelter, for communications. Even bringing a ship and having them come on board they just, for, it, for it's a safe just, haven. And it, although the CDC doesn't really look like they love the cruise lines, but the cruise lines seem that they're always stepping up to the plate when there is a tragedy of some type. They always have something to help the people to try to give them the opportunity to kind of live a normal life on the ship, just like they would in their home, where it's safe, it's clean, they can take a shower, they can have food, and they have medical them. attention, and support, and support the people. That's right. the important part. It is. Yeah. And, and they've always done that. I can th- I think back there uh, oh, years yeah. ago, Hurricane, Hurricane Katrina, mm-hmm. you know, they, they were right there for them. So, always. Right. Yeah. Always. Well, folks, this has been extremely informative. Is there anything else you guys might like to add? Well, so let's see. So after 34 say. years of doing this, uh, <laughs> <laughs> after 34 years in it, it The difference that you see in today's cruise industry versus let's go back to 1988 when we first started in this industry, you're actually, when you look and we were talking about the yields earlier, you have so much more that you're getting today than you did back then. The value. And to be honest with you, you're not paying that much more than you did those early years for cruising where you had to go to the dining rooms and now you have 15 different restaurants on the ships. So you're predominantly paying not a whole lot different than you did years ago to the amenities that they're offering today, paying almost the same price you did then. So you look at the value that you have on any of these cruise ships for the amount of money that you're paying and the amenities that are coming along with that that those fares. I think it's a home run for the cruise industry, no question. I would also like to add that I am so thrilled that the CDC finally realized all the hard work that the entire cruise industry put forward for them on behalf of all the passengers to show the CDC how safe it is now to take a, a, a cruise. Well, I, I 
I couldn't agree more with that, Helene. They just went above and beyond. They no did. question. To, they in, in my view, they were already the, one of the safest ways to vacation in terms no of right. health right. and safety because they, they needed to be. It's a closed environment. But now they've just gone way above that. And it's just super, just absolutely super. I agree. If folks wanted to possibly reach out to you folks about a, a cruise or a land vacation, what's the best way to do that, folks? Well, we have a couple different ways. You can go on our website, mm -hmm. which is cruiseholidaysnj.com. You can call the office at the 732-972-244 number, our 800 number, or go online. Or just, come on in and visit come us. come in and visit. We're here six days a week. We're here six days a week. So you can come in and visit anytime you like. And that's another plus, having our clients coming into the office, um, seeing old friends, right, seeing right. clients that are that are really more like family now. It's it's very rewarding. No it question. really is. Yeah, 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 yeah. it is. It, no question. It, it is so great to start to get back to normal and have, the, and have those interactions. Definitely. And no question. You folks got anything planned for yourselves? Any... Any upcoming um, to be vacations? honest with you, we've been yeah. very fortunate. We've won so many different cruises in these past two years, and we are way too busy to leave the office and go. We will. We'll, we'll make get up there. for we'll it. Get there. We will. Well, we'll I'm gonna there. hold I'm gonna I'm gonna hold you to that. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. We well, will. folks, this has been absolutely wonderful. Thank you. I will leave your contact information in the description for our viewers and listeners that might like to reach out to you. Okay, thanks. And the reason I'm holding you to that cruise is, as always, I hope to see the both of you on a Lido deck real soon. Yeah, yeah. and that I'll tell you what, other, I'm going to take you like on, on a celebrity cruise where the drinks are included, but I'll buy anyway, no problem. <laughs> I'll meet you at the martini bar. No That problem. sounds like a plan to me, folks. <laughs> Thank you for having us again. All right, take thanks, care. Ben. Bye. Bye. Take bye. care. And that about wraps it up for today, folks. I will leave Helene and Ira's contact information in the description if you'd like to reach out to them about a cruise vacation or a land vacation. If you'd like to reach us, you can simply send a question to questions at realtravelexperts.com, visit our website, realtravelexperts.com, or simply leave a comment. We always respond. And as always, folks, if you enjoy this content, a like, subscribe, and a ring of the bell is certainly appreciated and helps us to spread the word. So until next time, happy travels.